Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Josephine and on this channel we talk about fragrances. Today's video is about perfumery school. So I asked you on YouTube but also on Instagram what type of questions did you want to know about perfumery school? Because for those of you who don't know, I did my master's in perfumery. So today I will be answering all of your questions in this video. So if you'd like to know a little bit more about what it's like to be in perfumery school, then stay tuned. So before we get into the questions, I thought I would give you a little bit of background into perfumery school and my experience with it. So a couple of years back, I did my master's at a school called Isipka, which translates to Institut Supérieur International de la Parfumerie Cosmétique et Aromatique. So for short, that is called Isipka. And Isipka is a very well-known uh, school for perfumery. It is situated just outside of Paris in Versailles. And a lot of perfumers and famous noses have been there. An example is Francis Curjean. He studied there, for example and it's very well known within the fragrance industry. Now there's lots of other really good schools too, but I did my program at Isipka and this is my experience in perfumery school at that school. So the program that I did was the European Cosmetics and Fragrance Master, EFCM for short. And that is a two year program. You spend a year at Isipka where you learn all about cosmetics and perfume formulation, evaluation, and as well as raw materials, ingredients, so you're being trained on these materials. The second year I spent in Italy doing my masters in business, marketing, etc. that was related to perfumery. So I was in two different schools, but it was still under that one master degree that is delivered by Isipka. And at the end of those two years, I did an internship to validate my degree within a fragrance house. And so when I mean fragrance house, I mean a creative center, so where they actually create the perfumes, the juices, that's where all of the perfumers are based for brands like YSL, Hugo Boss. So that is my experience, my early experience within fragrances. And today I work within the fragrance industry and I'm basically living my passion on my day-to-day -day job and also on YouTube. So I live, breathe and sleep fragrances. So now that you've had a little bit of background, let's get into your questions. So I've had lots of questions in terms of admissions, how you get into perfumery school, what are the qualifications, etc. So let's begin with that. So one of the questions is from Antonio Sanchez. It is, what are the requirements to attend a perfumery school? How long does it take to graduate? What's the price? And do they have a job placement program after graduating? Excellent question, Antonio, thank you so much. One of the biggest requirements for the program that I did was that you needed to have a bachelor's in science. So I have a bachelor's in science, but it can be in biology, it can be in chemistry or biochemistry. So any of those are good to qualify for the program that I specifically did. And the reason why is that we do have chemistry classes in the first year, and it does help you understand how the ingredients uh, work together, you know, all the different types of structures to better understand olfactive profiles and also extraction techniques. So that is one of the main requirements. So how long does it take to graduate? It really varies depending on the program that you're in. For me, it was two years, but if you go in another type of program, it can be four years. And I actually have some friends who work within fragrance houses who are uh, trainee perfumers, and that's like another three or four years. So it does take time. It's pretty much as long as getting a degree to become a doctor, if you want specifically to be a perfumer. If you want to go into other fields, you don't need to study as long as that. And so do they offer a job placement program after graduating? In my experience, we have had to do an internship, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, for six months in order to validate our degree. So we were placed in companies thanks to the contacts of the school, but we also had to reach out ourselves to find internships within those companies. Now it's very difficult because the reality of the industry is that it's actually quite small and there isn't that many jobs within the industry. So you really have to either know people or if you do get an internship in a fragrance house, stick to that fragrance house and do all you can to stay within that 
perfume house because it's very, very difficult to find jobs. So Frag Enthusiast, hello Ricardo, thank you for your message. He's saying, uh, is there a common background shared among attendees, freelance indies creators, essays, people within particular perfume houses, etc.? So the background for us that basically all puts us together is the fact that we have a scientific background, but other than that, it's pretty much, you know, we have a very diverse background. In my uh, class, we were 20 from all over the world, so it was a really international class. Now they've opened the program to 40 people, and again, it's from all over the world. So I had people from India, from China, from the US, everywhere, which was super cool and really nice to be with all of these cultures and also hear about their experiences with fragrances. Next up, Miriam asks, what are the jobs you could look forward to when you graduate besides having your own YouTube channel? So my YouTube channel is actually a hobby. I have a full-time job other than YouTube that is also in perfume, but YouTube is um, my fun hobby on the side. So depending on the degree that you do, you'll get different jobs. So the one that I did, it was a very broad program that taught you many different things of the industry. So we had training in uh, formulation, in evaluation, in raw ingredients recognition. So you could go into becoming a nose or a perfumer, or you could come into working in fragrance evaluation, which is the person that links the perfumer to the marketing team and the clients. You can venture into marketing, which is where I'm at. You can go into commercial. Literally, you can go anywhere which is really cool. It really depends what you like to do. And then the common question that I got as well is, is the course in English? And the answer is yes, the one that I did is in English. I believe there's another one from the Grasse Institute of Perfumery back in Grasse that also is taught in English. And actually, if you go online, they offer online courses, which is super awesome. So you can find perfumery schools that are taught in English in France. And one thing that I will say is that the best perfumery schools, the best of the best, are all based in France. There is really a handful of them that are phenomenal and great to learn the ropes of the industry. It's ISIPCA, École Supérieure du Parfum, which is based in Paris, and you have Grasse Institute of Perfumery in Grasse in the south of France. The next question is from Olfactor Stories. What's a typical day at perfumery school what kind of courses do you have? Where are the other students coming from? So I've already answered the where are the students coming from part. They're from all over the world. And in terms of a typical day, well, one of my favorite days is a day when you're in the lab. So you have a full day in the lab from nine to five where you're formulating with fragrance ingredients. So for example, I learned how to build basic accords which are fougère fragrances, chypre perfumes, and oriental scents. So it's literally the olfactory pyramid. You know exactly what ingredients go into like your top, middle, and base notes, and you recreate an oriental fragrance or fougère perfume. I've also recreated different types of flower accords. So a rose, a rose absolute, a rose essence, jasmine. So that is really fun because you really get to experiment and play around with the fragrances. I will say though that it is super intense. Sitting from nine to five in a lab is really intense when you're smelling constantly because when you're smelling, it actually requires a lot of concentration. You don't realize it until you get to the end of the day and you're totally dead. <laughs> so it does take a lot of mental effort when you're in the lab, but it's really worth it. Another time we'll be training on uh, fragrance materials. So we used to have a palette of ingredients that we would train on when we would be at home or also at perfumery school. And so we would all smell together different notes, both synthetic and naturals, and try and describe them during the class with the teacher. So that was like another course that I had within perfumery school. Rina Shillian asks, what resources can we use to learn more about perfumery, notes, etc., without going to perfumery school? So there are some great online resources for this. One that I can think about is Experimental Perfume Club. So they're a brand based in the UK that create fragrances, but they're also known for doing fragrance workshops. 
and they actually have an online course. I actually checked the website earlier, where you can learn basic formulation to create fragrances, also some courses about ingredients and like how to recognize them, etc. So that is a really good resource. I'm sure there's other brands that do that. If you type in Google local uh, perfumery workshop, I'm sure you'll find some things. I've done that for London and there's lots of little workshops like that that can be super helpful. There's definitely a few in Grasse and I went to one of them which was done with Molinar and it was fantastic. So it's a lot of fun. You get to create your own fragrance. In terms of other resources, Fragrantica is fantastic. If you want to learn more about perfumery notes, what say lemon or lime smells like, Fragrantica have a whole section dedicated on notes uh, on their website. But also if you like a fragrance and you search it, then you can always find something that is similar as well on Fragrantica. So that is really good to help train yourself um, in terms of re recognizing different notes, different types of fragrances, etc. Now, one thing I will say as well is that all you need to really do is just go out and smell perfumes. It's one thing to recognize ingredients, it's another to recognize different types of fragrances because once you have different ingredients within a perfume, it's completely different. There's lots of different things going on rather than focusing on one material. So go out, go in store, smell different perfumes and train your nose that way. That is one of the biggest tips I can give you. And also if you do have an olfactive kit at home, if you found some essences, smell them every day. If this is something that you want to do, your brain and your recognition of smell is a muscle. You need to train it every single day, otherwise I promise you will forget. Then we have a question on how do they blend different notes? Is there any formula? I mean the ratio of essences. So yes, we have basic ratios for different accords like your Chypre, uh, Fougère, etc. But ultimately it's about experimenting and um, that perfumery is a science. Creating perfumes is a science, but it's also an art. So it's mixing science, art and creativity to create a fragrance. So it's really about experimenting and having fun with perfume. Okay, then Ek Manzer. Are students allowed to wear perfume in class? Do instructors wear perfume? And if so, does it create difficulties in the lab? Another question is, does it kill your interest in fragrance after you finish your course? A lot of people lose interest in their hobbies once they have taken them seriously. I remember wearing fragrance when I was just in the classroom, not necessarily smelling anything. Say I was in chemistry class, I would wear it. But in the lab, you don't wear fragrance. The teacher or us, you don't wear perfumes because it's really distracting. You're trying to create a formulation and you don't want to have a scent that distracts your nose. There's already so much going on. It's just really difficult. So yeah, you don't wear perfume in the lab. And the other question had to do with, um, does it kill my interest? Absolutely not. As I said previously, I work in perfumery and then after that I do YouTube videos. So yeah, for me, I absolutely love fragrances. I don't see it. I don't see myself falling out of love with it. I'm completely obsessed and it just makes me really happy. Next we have questions on fragrance creation and formulation. So what process do they use in blending so molecules stay together? So the way that we worked in the lab is that you have your natural ingredients and your synthetics. They come in different forms depending on the extraction technique. So you can have an essence or an absolute. The difference in name depends on the extraction. Now you always dilute your pure material in a certain percentage of alcohol before you work around playing with the notes. So what we would do is dilute the ingredient in alcohol and then we would uh, mix the ingredients together. And in order for a fragrance to start taking form, you need it to have some time of maceration. So you need the fragrance to sit for the molecules to interact with each other. So we would give it maybe like three days or so in order to get a better sense of what the fragrance is like. So that is how we used to do it in the lab. So how do brands choose the best formulation? It's very simple really. Have you ever noticed that a lot of fragrances smell the same? Well, there's a reason for it. That's because there's one or two perfumes that are very, very good bestsellers within the market. And brands, they want their fragrance to be successful. They want to be making a lot of money. And so they will often say, we want to bench against X perfume that is very successful. So the perfumer and the perfume house will create fragrance that has similar notes or has a similar feel to that perfume to ensure that that fragrance will sell for them. Question by Flip Bezera. <laughs> this is from Instagram. 
Are fragrances really crafted by its perfumer or the team that works for them? So yes, so uh, what happens is a fragrance house will get a brief from a brand and they will pass that brief on to the perfumer. And so the perfumer has a team uh, around him. He will create a juice or different selections of fragrances based on that one brief, so different variants, and we'll share this with the fragrance evaluator. So the fragrance evaluator will help guide the perfumer to ensure that the fragrance will meet the needs of the client because they have a back and forth liaison with marketing, commercial, and the client. So it's really a group effort and uh, yeah, for sure, everything starts off with and finishes with the perfumer. Steph Bunny asks, did you have access to the recipes for commercial perfumes? Definitely not. This is like a trade secret. The recipes are never shared. Even in fragrance houses, they're kept under lock and key. I mean, if that was the case, then, uh, you know, you could recreate any perfume that you want. So no, it's top, top secret. Irregular Tangent asks, how much information do perfume schools teach you about the quality of ingredients being used in the industry today? And do you always light up the room with your cheerful smile? Thank you, that's really nice. Um, yeah, so we have a full comprehensive course on some key ingredients that are used within perfumery, so naturals and synthetics. We're very much aware of the quality of them, of the price per kilo, so they do teach this to us in a very thorough way and it's super interesting. Jim Testy, how different are people's sense of smell? What are the major reasons? So interesting, uh, why do we all have different sense of smell? Well, we're actually all born with a different olfactive imprint. So you know your digits have a different imprint, like a digital imprint? Well, you have an olfactive one as well. And the way that this olfactive imprint is created or developed is based on your past experiences. So each one of us have a different imprint and explains why some of us love vanilla notes, for example, and others hate vanilla notes. Some of us love woods, others hate woods. That is all based on your past experiences of how you've grown up and that will determine your olfactive imprint. Jeff Kalita, what opinions or ideas have changed since you started going to school? Is there a widely held belief regarding fragrances that is just plain wrong? So one of the main things I learned when I studied perfumery was well, there's two things. <laughs> the first one is I thought that YSL, for example, as a brand, created their own fragrances. That's not the case at all. It's actually fragrance houses that do. If you want a video to know a little bit more behind the scenes of how things work in a fragrance house, let me know in the comments down below because it is such a mysterious world. There's not that much information on it and it's very fascinating and really creative. So uh, let me know in the comments down below if you'd like to know more about that. The second thing that I've learned is that the quality of a fragrance isn't determined by how long it lasts on your skin. Everyone these days seems to think that if a fragrance lasts 12 hours on your skin, it's a good quality scent. That's not the case. Good quality materials are a mix of naturals and synthetics. Synthetics help make your fragrance last longer, but naturals, really good quality naturals, will not last on your skin for ages. I mean, of course it depends on the olfactory family, but they're not necessarily intended to last for 12 hours on your skin. And that is one thing that I learned is that naturals and good quality ingredients doesn't always equal longevity. And I'm getting a lot of questions on synthetic versus natural perfumes, what is my preference? What does that have to do with performance? What is the best? I pretty much answer this. I personally like a mix of naturals and synthetics. It creates something that is very layered and complex. And that is what made the charm and the success of Chanel number no. five, was that it used for the first time a high dose of aldehydes, which are synthetics mixed with naturals. So when you mix the two, you get a really layered effect. If you have purely naturals, um, you get something that is beautiful and there's some really great natural brands. I have a full video on those, I can link them down below. But I prefer to have some synthetics to help your fragrance last a little bit longer to add more layer and complexity. So I feel that like this video is getting already very long. I feel that I've answered the most commonly asked questions. If you have any additional questions, pop them down below and maybe I can do a part two. I hope you found this video somewhat useful uh, and yeah, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in another video. Bye!